Well, visitors to the Aso Rock presidential villa, including governors, will now be required to carry out a rapid COVID-19 test at the gate before being allowed access to the state house. Presidential spokesperson Garuba Shehu says the test will be free and is part of efforts to limit the spread of the virus. He says exemption will be granted to a few leaders. While explaining that the test won't take more than a few minutes and is... Well, part of efforts to curb the spike in COVID-19 infections, Shehu says the measure is a temporary step that will be re reviewed as things progress. Okay, well, for more on these, we're now being joined by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garba Shehu. Very warm welcome, uh, Malam Garba Shehu, to Newsnight. Thank you for this opportunity. Tell us, I mean, um, some people may just think that uh, the case of uh, the COVID-19 situation in the presidential villa uh, must be rising. Uh, that's why these new measures, or what could have informed it? No, it's a reflection of what is uh, happening in the whole country. I think the numbers are not looking very good. And uh, if you see what is also happening all around the world, uh, the world is moving in a direction, and this is exactly where it is going. Uh, on attendance at international conferences uh, these days in many countries, or to even go to your office in some government buildings outside this country, you show a daily COVID result. And this is so, therefore, we are not doing anything that others are not doing. You go outside, you attend a conference, and they give you a test kit for each day of the conference and you test yourself and you present your results in the morning uh, so therefore yes we had had uh, some issues uh, uh, recent, recently in the state house but we have to show example and uh, the standard has to be set from somewhere and this is why the presidential villa is taking lead on this matter Mm. Uh, Malam Garbashe, who I'm sure you are as uh, thankful and grateful as we are that you have overcome, uh, you know, your bout with COVID-19 uh, yourself. Uh, but before now, visitors to the Aso Rock Villa were uh, required to present 48-hour uh, tests. Is that going to remain with this new... Uh, you know, directive or requirement? And what's the basis for the exemptions of uh, some leaders? Will that not amount to the president and others at the villa, you know, still being exposed to the virus? No, on the contrary, I think that you have to give recognition to, um, we are talking about a very limited number of people. We are talking about maybe the chief justice of the federation, uh, the speaker of the House of Representatives and the president of the Senate. And the, even these ones too, when they are coming, if they are coming, they are required, they are advised to do the test. But uh, certainly nobody would stop a uh, Speaker of House or Senate President or Chief Justice from going into the villa on account of not having a test. And uh, the, the other question as to whether the 48-hour requirement will still remain with this new... Um, you know, procedure requirements. Yeah, for uh, people coming with uh, specific appointments, engagements, groups that come, that has been a standard requirement. And that is not to say it has changed. Okay. Uh, let me just quickly take you to one of our uh, uh, news items here, where governor, the governor of River State, Yison Wike, mm -hmm. you know, uh, criticized the president uh, in no uh, little way by saying that Mr. President knew that, short of saying uh, the president knew that the 2022 budget was padded, but that it was overloaded, unimplementable, and we is questioning, why then did the president go ahead to sign it? I think uh, Governor Wike is just rambling, and he's just saying things he doesn't know. Is that how they campaign to become president or vice president? I think you should get serious. What the president is saying is that, look, we have more than 100,000 schemes in that budget. 100,000. You have problems with 6,000. And you want to hold the country down 
because you have to resolve 6,000 issues. That's not the way it is done. There is urgency to deliver on key projects. We got just barely a year to go. The president is in a hurry to complete some projects and some that are new that are being started. We want to make progress on those ones. So yes, there's an issue with about 6,000 plus, but the thing is that, you know, this is a democracy. And uh, whoever says they should re read the constitution, nowhere did it say that it is only the executive that should write the budget. The, the parliament has a role as well. So the thing is, we are engaging. It's a matter of give and take. It's a matter of give and take, and that's how democracy works. Same that uh, the give and take attitude applied in the case of the electoral act amendment bill uh, which uh, you know because of the direct uh, primaries clause the president refused to sign that act that nigerians had been looking forward to and of course uh, ditto the pia the uh, petroleum industry act uh, in spite of imperfections uh, the president went ahead uh, to sign uh, the, the impression is that the president is cherry picking or more or less politicizing uh, his presidential powers no, I think we should get serious about some of these things. When he didn't refuse, he withheld assent to the electoral act, there were about five key bullet issues that he had raised. And one of which, of course, touches on the respect for the constitution. He swore to uphold the constitution of this country. If any part of the law is in breach of the constitution, and, and somebody is going to court, and they will go to court to prove it, the opinion available to the government is that if you sign the law as it is, but in fact, the direct primary may possibly apply to only new political parties that are registered. The big ones, PDP, APC, that are already there, they have registered their constitutions with INEC over time. Where is, why is it written in the constitution that the president has the power to go and call political party to rewrite their constitution? It's not done. So we should please show understanding and respect for the decision. It is in the interest of the country that we should go back. All of these parties have written in their own constitutions, direct primary, consensus, indirect primary. They are entitled to make a choice. We are not a dictatorship. We can't say whatever he wants to say. He's not a Democrat. But, um, a lot of people believe that the president's failure to sign the electoral bill is uh, a setback, not just for the electoral process, but for Nigeria's uh, democracy as a whole. Uh, some, you know, say, look, the president should have gone ahead, signed the electoral uh, amendment, the electoral act amendment bill, and, you know, then uh, going forward, uh, you know, amend the constitution or amend that particular electoral act. Well, uh, uh, two, two things I will say. One is that if you look at the amount of money that is required to run the direct primaries, and uh, this issue that I've just raised about constitutionality of the president directing or the federal government asking political parties to go and rewrite their constitution. It's not done, but when people are shouting over these things, and look, there are people, there are opportunities and the absence of opportunities on all sides of the discussion. There are people who feel that they have huge presidential or whatever ambitions, governorship, national assembly, and they cannot secure nominations under the processes as they exist. They want to circumvent that. Some of it, the debate is informed by interest that is selfish because you simply can't get what you want under the system that exists. So therefore, you want it circumvented. You want direct primary because you know that you cannot engage. There are people who cannot even go back to the rest. They are leaders in politics. They have nobody in the party headquarters. They cannot talk to anybody in their local government, in their state, or at the national headquarters. So it's, it's a legitimate anyway. People can compete and contest for advantages in the given situation. But the president is looking at overall national interest and is guided by it.
Okay, um, let me ask you finally, I'll take you back to uh, the budget. Mr. President, why signing the 2022 budget had said that he's going to come up with uh, a supplementary budget, you know, uh, to by, by, I don't know how soon that is going to be. You want to tell Nigerians that we're going to see that when the National Assembly reconvenes in January, I mean this January, uh, the president is not is presenting a budget amendment bill and uh, we are hoping that uh, the national assembly and the executive would sit down and uh, iron out uh, whatever differences are there and for the country to move forward but the budget is a law implementation begins has begun from january 1. all right uh, we'll have to leave it there malam garba shehu a presidential spokesman uh, speaking to us on Arise News Night.